Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Zion this morning. What a gift and a pleasure and a privilege to be together here in God's house. And thank you for weathering the weather a little bit this morning. This is God's house. He invites us into his presence. He is here with open arms to speak to us, to forgive us, to feed us in the sacrament, to bless us with mercy and grace. And we are eager to, to receive all of that from him as we prepare our hearts this Advent season for our Lord's coming. With that, as the baptized people of God, we come into the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Together. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Beloved, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works he has done his miracles, and the judgments he uttered, O offspring of Abram, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of 
Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We rise and sing the entrance hymn. Thank you. 
Good morning. Our first lesson today is from Isaiah 11, 1 to 10. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see, or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be on the belt of his waist, and the faithfulness the belt of his loins. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the calf and the lion and the fattened calf together. And the little child shall lead them, the cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lay down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the cobra, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They shall not hurt or destroy in all holy mountains. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, and the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse, who, stand, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nation inquire, and his resting place shall be glorious. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The word of the Lord, I should have said, sorry. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Second lesson today is Romans 15, 4 through 12. Whatever was written in former days was written for our instruction, that through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may find one voice Glorify the Lord and the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you to the glory of the God. For I tell you that Christ became a servant to the circumcised, excuse me, a servant to the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, in order to confirm the promises given to the patriarchs, and in order that the Gentiles might glory God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing your name. And again it is said, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and let all the peoples extol him. And again, Isaiah says, The root of Jesse will come. Even he who arises to rule the Gentiles, in him will the Gentiles hope. May the God of hope fill with all your joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Confessing their sins. 
But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And don't presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we light the second candle on our Advent wreath. The light gets just a wee bit brighter as Jesus, the light of the world, draws just a little bit closer. And we continue our Advent journey this morning using the seven great old antiphons to guide our worship and our reflection. As I mentioned last Sunday, these great old antiphons are seven short prayers that have been prayed and sung as part of the Advent worship life of God's people for over 1,600 years. 
All seven of these ancient prayers begin with the word O and then add that name for Jesus. O wisdom, O Lord, O branch of Jesse, O key of David, O morning star, O king of nations, and O Emmanuel. As I mentioned last week, by the 12th century, these great O antiphons became one of our most beloved Advent hymns, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Beloved, each of these seven prayers asks our Lord Jesus, who first came as the babe of Bethlehem, not only to come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, but to come into our world and into our lives right here, right now. Each of these seven prayers asks the Lord to answer right here, right now, in a powerful way, the second petition of the prayer our Lord himself taught us, your kingdom come. Last Sunday, we focused our attention on the first two antiphons, Jesus our wisdom and Jesus our Lord. We prayed, O oh, wisdom, proceeding from the mouth of the Most High, pervading and permeating all creation, mightily ordering all things. Come and teach us the way of wisdom. And then we also pray, O oh Adonai, and ruler of the house of Israel, who appeared to Moses in the burning bush and gave him the law on Sinai, come with an outstretched arm and redeem us. And now today, we focus our attention on the third and fourth antiphons, Jesus, branch of Jesse, and Jesus, key of David. So beloved, let's dig deeper. Jesus, branch of Jesse. O root of Jesse, standing as an ensign before the peoples, before whom all kings are mute, to whom the nations will do homage, come quickly to deliver us. Our Old Testament reading this morning in Isaiah the 11th chapter highlights this advent name of Jesus. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his ways. Beloved, in the previous chapters of Isaiah, the Lord has spoken judgment against his people. Their kings and leaders have been corrupt. They've led God's people into idolatry. Their desire to be just like all of the other nations around them is bringing catastrophe upon the life of God's people. But here in our reading this morning, the Lord leaves behind his word of judgment and takes his people in a brand new direction. Here in our reading this morning, the Lord speaks words of promise. And these wonderful words of promise aren't just somewhere over the rainbow, words of promise about another time or another place. No, beloved. The Lord speaks these wonderful words of promise both for Isaiah's listeners and for us. These wonderful words of promise tell us who God is and where God's taking us as his people right here, right now. These wonderful words of promise show us a God who loves us, 
A God who does everything possible to save us. A God who turns our lives upside down, inside out, and then right side up. A God who pours into us his mercy and grace, transforming our lives and making all things new. Beloved, when Isaiah first spoke these words, David's family tree looked pretty bleak. There was nothing left but a dead stump. And even now, as we look all around us, we may find our own context looking rather bleak. So much of what we see around us looks just like that dead stump. But beloved, God is able to take a dead stump and bring out of it new life. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. And this wonderful word of promise finds its ultimate fulfillment in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's the tender shoot emerging from the dead stump. He's the righteous branch who bears rich fruit, abundant fruit that transforms your life and mine. He's the one upon whom the spirit of the Lord rests, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. In John's Gospel, the first chapter, John, the forerunner, points to Jesus and says, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And then he says this about Jesus. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And Jesus himself, preaching in the Nazareth synagogue at the beginning of his ministry, said this. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to proclaim freedom for the captives and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Yes, beloved, Jesus is the branch of Jesse. He doesn't judge us by what he sees or hears. If he did, all of our sins in thought, word, and deed would condemn us. No, beloved. He judges us in terms of his own righteousness. He lives the perfect life we can't. He dies the death we deserve. He leaves the grave behind empty, bringing new life, his life, into our lives. His righteousness becomes our righteousness. And beloved, he gives us his righteousness as a free gift of grace. Righteousness is his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. And beloved, the gift of our Lord's righteousness makes all the difference in the world. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Now to be sure, beloved, this picture of God's kingdom as the Garden of Eden restored seems so utterly fantastical. It's certainly not what we're experiencing right here, right now. Or is it? Beloved, I do think we experience this picture of God's kingdom right here, right now. Even if it's just a brief, momentary, fleeting glimpse. Every 
every time God's kingdom manifests itself in our lives, every time God's grace is poured into our lives, every time God's grace moves us to reconciliation and forgiveness, every time the Holy Spirit empowers us to love all those around us, even in the smallest of ways, beloved, we experience just a tiny wee bit this new reality in our lives. And God promises us the day will come when we will see this vision of the Garden of Eden restored become our full and complete reality for all eternity. And so, beloved, we long for this day to come. We long to experience even just a tiny bit of this day right here, right now. And so with all those who've experienced this kind of mercy and grace, all those who've gone before us over the past 1,600 years, we pray this third O antiphon with all our heart. O root of Jesse, standing as an ensign before the peoples, before whom all kings are mute, to whom the nations will do homage. Come, come quickly to deliver us. And that, my beloved, brings us to our second antiphon for today. O key of David and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and no one can close. You close and no one can open. Come and rescue the prisoners who are in darkness and the shadow of death. Jesus, key of David. We also find this Advent name for Jesus first spoken in the book of Isaiah. In chapter 22, God is once more speaking judgment against the leaders of God's people for their faithlessness. The Lord had called them to repentance, but instead of repentance, they chose feasting and revelry. They chose what they wanted to do instead of what God wanted them to do. And so God's judgment will come. Till your dying day, this sin will not be atoned for, says the Lord, the Lord Almighty. And God's judgment will take the form of deposing the current leaders and replacing them with someone new. I will depose you from your office and you will be ousted from your position. In that day, says the Lord, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, I will clothe him with your robe and fasten your sash around him and hand your authority over to him. He will be a father to those who live in Jerusalem and to the people of Judah. I will place on his shoulder the key to the house of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. Beloved, here in Isaiah chapter 22, God promises to raise up a good leader for God's people. And he promises to give this new leader the power and the authority of King David himself. The key of King David's kingdom will be his. And beloved, this promise finds its ultimate fulfillment in our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus isn't just a son of David. He's the son of David. He's the one whose life, death, and resurrection conquers sin, death, and the power of Satan. He's our good king, our good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. He's the light of the world who comes into our dark world to rescue us and save us. He's the one who sets the prisoners free, who gives sight to the blind, who frees the oppressed, who through his life, death, and resurrection brings God's favor and ushers in God's reign. He's the one whom God himself has exalted to the highest place 
giving him the name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is more to the glory of God the Father. And beloved, he's the one whom John sees in his wondrous revelation. Listen to John describe what he saw. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash around his chest. The hair on his head was white, white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and coming out of his mouth was a sharp two-edged sword. His face was like the sun in shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Stop being afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. Behold, I was dead, and now I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. And just a little bit later, John hears Jesus speak to the church in Philadelphia. These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. Oh, beloved, this is great good news for us. When Jesus locks away the power of sin, death, and Satan in our lives, no one, no one can open that door ever again. And when Jesus opens the door to his mercy and grace, forgiveness, life, and salvation, no one, no one can ever shut that door on us. We are his now and forever. And so, beloved, on this second Sunday in Advent, not only do we pray for Jesus, the branch of Jesse, to come and deliver us, we also pray for Jesus, the key of David, to come and rescue us who this side of heaven sit in death's dark shadow. Yes, beloved, we join all those who prayed this fourth great old antiphon across the centuries, praying with all our heart for Jesus, key of David, to open for us what no one can close and to close for us what no one can open. We pray with all our heart for Jesus, key of David, to close tight all of Satan's accusations against us and to open for us the way to everlasting life. O oh, key of David, and scepter of the house of Israel. You open and no one can close. You close and no one can open. Come, come and rescue the prisoners who are in darkness in the shadow of death. Amen. Amen.
tells a story of our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke of the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Beloved, let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come to you today with hearts of eager longing, longing for your presence, longing for your appearance, longing for your coming. We pray that we would hear the voice of John the forerunner this morning, calling us to repentance and faith. We pray that we might indeed be preparing your way, preparing your highway, so that you can once more this day enter our lives and take us where you want us to go. We pray that you would indeed fulfill your promises, your Advent promises, to us as this family of faith called Zion, and to every gathering of believers throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, we pray this day, O oh Lord, for those in need. We pray for those who are ill, especially for Kenny and Brian and Mick, Kirk and Richard and Mark. We pray for those who are homebound, especially for Dolly and Vivian and Ellen as she recovers from a broken leg, and Mark and Ruth. We pray for those who are grieving, especially the niece's family as they continue to mourn the loss of her sister-in-law, Lori. Oh Lord, we pray that whatever the need might be, whether it be spiritually, emotionally, or physically, that you would wrap your arms up, up around these people and all those in need, that you would hold them close to your heart and bring healing and wholeness and contentment into their lives. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who rejoice this day. You pour so many, many blessings into our lives each and every day, and we lift our voices in praise and thanksgiving. We rejoice for the birthdays of Elizabeth Flagg and Alicia Keys. We ask that you continue to give them every good gift of grace throughout the coming year. We give thanks for the wedding anniversary today of Mike and Denise Curtis. How you have blessed them, and we pray that you would continue to bind them together as husband and wife, be a blessing in their lives each and every day. Lord, in your mercy, and finally, O oh Lord, we pray for our world and our leaders. There is so much going on around us that just makes it seem so dark. And so we need you, Lord, to shine your light into our dark world. Open our eyes, open the eyes of everyone in 
in our readings this morning, we heard, or in that, that, that uh, O Antiphon, we heard this morning that, that all kings, all leaders will stand before you mute, and all nations will bow in homage to you. And we pray that that would indeed come to pass, that your light would shine brightly in our world, and all people come to know your mercy and grace. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. to 
proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of His body and His blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Beloved, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's kingdom until he comes. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
for those communing in the pew to take ease. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take drink. This is the blood of Jesus shed for you. Now may this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in true faith and the life everlasting. Go in his love, his joy, and his peace. Amen.
we rise for the Nunc Dimittis. some kind of remembrance. It'll be a bit informal, not a formal funeral. It'll be a time to gather in, in prayer and thanksgiving and a time to share some words of resurrection and a time to share memories. So those of you who are interested, please, please feel free to join us. And there will be a light reception in the fellowship hall after. Also, next Sunday, right after church, is the Christmas dinner. If you haven't gotten your tickets yet, please see Steve or some of the other folks who have them. We very much want to celebrate Christmas together over food, our entire Zion family. Tickets are just five dollars. And I have a couple of concerts to announce. One is the Portland Girls Choir will be here on December 17th. And also this afternoon, there's a concert at 5 p.m. at Congregation Beth Israel. It's called Nefesh Mountain. It's a blend of American folk music, Appalachian bluegrass, Celtic, and Eastern European melodies. Sounds a little bit interesting, doesn't it? Any other announcements this morning? Yes. So on Tuesday, we have the, um, the luncheon for the Zion Hill. And I, I just wanted to say, if you're planning on coming and you don't usually come, um, you, you're welcome. And we would welcome you. But I also would ask if you would get a hold of Lisa and let her know so we can come and prepare for it. So if you're coming to the luncheon, let us know so we have enough food, right? Any other announcements? If not, we rise for the sending hymn, and all the world was cursed.
God, go in peace and serve the Lord.